Hey guys, Dr. Charlie Weir coming to you. Um, quick information about depression and chronic disease. Once again, I try to come to you with a lot of the questions that I, I'm asked either in clinic or also you know, on Facebook as well. So this was sort of an impromptu uh, Facebook Live when I come to you guys. I have a lot of questions concerning um, depression and also um, chronic pain. Um, you know, let's just throw out the research about 60% of individuals with chronic pain, uh, no matter what it is, whether, whether it's sickle cell disease, arthritis, um, some sort of neurological de 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 um, deficit, um, trauma, whatever it is, is around 60% of individuals that have these chronic pain, um, issues really are in that depression type category. Um, some of it can be uh, drug induced. We, we know that some of the um, pain medications can, um, cause some sort of psychological issues where a person sort of like zones out a little bit. But um, I want to give you guys a few points and tips on how to, as caregivers or uh, individuals that be suffering from this, can actually help themselves out a little bit better. Um, you know, depression is something that affects, you know, millions of Americans uh, per year. And then worldwide is, is something that um, we say hundreds of millions of individuals are affected with depression, whether it be clinical or just a temporary um, types of depression. When it comes to chronic pain, is is really a it's something that goes back to a a pain cycle that uh, this is one reason why we have a lot of psychologists or pain therapists um, inside of these um, pain management clinics these days because we are really trying to get the root of the cause of the actual either depression or the also pain which is is one of those pain loops that um, people tend to go in and especially in the African American community. Depression or mental illness is very, very rarely spoken about because of the fact that it's a stigma. And also in regular society, it's also a stigma. So uh, definitely with what's going on in our society with a lot of the um, like violent things that's going on, we want to um, you know, have people not stigmatized. But we have to realize that it's actually a reality that goes on. Now, in chronic pain, the reason why I say that is a cyclical thing that, that can happen is when someone has debilitating pain that's actually affecting their daily lives. You know, you can't, you know, get out of bed properly. You can't work properly. You can't, you know, even feed yourself. And sometimes um, there's a certain amount of depression that goes on just emotionally that goes on. And then to taper with that, we're taking different medications that can actually put you into a uh, mental state. When I say mental state, a lot of times individuals that, that, that are on pain medications know that, you know, you sort of have a mental block from the pain for, for a bit, but in that you know, you can actually start to get in your head a little bit too much and get into the cycle of, you know, when is it ever going to stop happening or, you know, this is going to be your life forever, things like that. And that's why we try to find, you know, effective solutions to try to help the pain, not just to mask it, but to actually get rid of the pain and go to the root cause. Now, the thing that we, we've seen with a lot of research, um, you know, in, in uh, NCDI, um, a lot of times what we see is there can be a trace mineral deficiency. Yes, of course, it can actually happen. There can be, especially long-term use of pain medic meds can actually create, you know, anxiety, depression, as we know, constipation, um, different stomach issues. But the main point I'm hitting on right now is like a lot of the pain, uh, a lot of mental issues that these pain medications can cause. We know Neurotin or... Um, I used to do a break. The rod and also um, a few of the other uh, pain medications directly affect the brain, um, which means that um, I, I have some, some patients that are students in the college or even in high school that are taking some of these um, uh, pain med medications that they can't concentrate. So when you can't concentrate, that basically means that your brain function is actually being decreased. And the longer you take these pain medications, the, the more your brain function is being decreased over and over and over again. So what we're trying to do is actually give you some things that can actually clean your, your neurons and actually make your body function on a higher basis and actually sort of get you out of, out of your head a little bit. But first and foremost, you definitely want to get some sort of counseling, a support system around you. Um, and when I mean a support system, you want to have a group of friends, not per se clinical, but we also want you to have a clinical person you, you're dealing with. But you want some friends that are around you that can really you know, uplift you and not make it about your pain all the time. Then with pain, you know, chronic pain patients, I just had three who just left my office um, right now. You know, we have different modes. We have different uh, 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 levels of chronic pain. What tends to happen is it's really about the support system. The individuals I see that, that really thrive the best are the people that have the best support systems around themselves. So, it, you know, mother, father, boyfriend, wife, husband, 
um, friends to family, whatever it may be, you want to have a good support system around you, people that are always going to uplift you. And yes, having chronic pain, you know you can't do certain things for yourself. You can be a 19-year-old, you know, muscle-bound guy or, uh, you know, a 21-year-old model or whatever. But if you have chronic pain, you still need that support system around you. That's, they're there for you, not there for a reason and things of that sort. So um, to couple that, one, you want you definitely want to have a good support system. Two, you want to make sure your, your nutrition is on point. A lot of times what happens is, and it was a research that was done with teenage boys. I, I just use this, this, this whole um, research model. Teenage boys um, that had loud outbursts and, and bits of, of anger and also depression um, from the age of um, puberty from around like 12 to about 16 years old. They found that 90% of them were actually deficient in either magnesium, selenium, and actually CoQ10. So once they started being supplemented with these supplements, they found that you know the depression and the, the, the bursts of anger, things of that sort, were were like curved dramatically, almost you know non-existent any longer. So we know that from a pain standpoint, that a lot of these pain medications are actually taking a lot of these you know trace minerals out of your body. So if you're able to help supplement yourself by nutrition and some sort of supplementation and being proactive with your health, you can actually help the depression as well. Because especially if it's, it's you know, more so medicine induced, because again, like I said, it's one of the side effects. If you read the, read the labels to most of these pain medications, it is a side effect to it. Um, I'm sorry, gabapitin was the other one I was thinking about that a lot of um, new patients are being put on, especially in the sickle cell realm. They've been putting on gabapitin, which is, is definitely affecting, the gabapitin is a trace, um, the neural um, uh, trace, a neurological trace mineral um, that's produced inside of your brain um, and you can actually um, you know that they have medicines that actually help uptake that or help block that um, so certain brain functions or certain pain um, modes are basically being taken out so what's happening is um, with the use of that we're noticing that a lot of especially students their brain function is being reduced a lot of them depression or anxiety is being set in as well again some of the side effects from that that's why I say some of the good supplementation can actually help that out very, very uh, good um, thing you can do is actually have really good fish oils, the, the um, uh, omega-3s, omega-6s, um, definitely the hemp oil and also coconut oil has been shown to actually help to, to curb a lot of, of these issues too. And you want to do that in higher dose. Say for instance, if you get a good coconut oil that can get in a capsule, if it says take two pills um, twice a day, I also take four pills you know, um, twice a day, things of that sort, to help curb some of the neuro, uh, um, neurological deficits that may actually happen as well. And also make sure you stay hydrated, um, not with sugary drinks um, or caffeinated drinks. We, we notice that a lot of the peaks and valleys happen when an uh, individual is high on caffeine or have a lot of sugar in their system. That's when they have that, that manic or, you know, they have that, those trembles. And then when the, that sugar rush um, starts to go off, when that caffeine um, starts to come out of their system, they tend to be more um, depressed looking and also more, more so depressed feeling as well. So those are a few things, you know, again, hydration has to be on point, stay away from the sugary drinks and also the caffeinated drinks. Um, I have individuals that walk around drinking Red Bulls and things of that sort, especially in a chronic pain patient, that's going to completely knock off your system, Not it's not good for you. Uh, have ca high caffeinated drinks would definitely push you on these ebbs and flows, ups and downs, uh, which, which can create more anxiety, more um, depression as well. You definitely want to be on a good um, omega oil or fish oil or yeah. hemp oil yeah. as well. You can try any of those out or um, coconut oil. As well as um, you just want to make sure, sure you have really, really good support system around you and nourish yourself dramatically as well. Um, my son takes less pro because how you do, um, uh, Miss B? Uh, let me see, Lex works because he has, yes. Exactly. Um, Lexapro is something that I see a lot of patients that are on um, as, again, especially in a sickle cell case or a chronic pain um, case, the, it's the pain medication and then it creates all these other, you know, cascading things. And I see Lexapro is, is, one, is one of the ones they put, they put people on. I'm not a fan of Lexapro and I say the only reason why it's hard to get off of it and it's hard to really uh, mediate when the real person is sort of there because the person is like basically in a, a state of like, you know, being okay and not really being too happy or too sad. Um, yeah, Sam E really, um, you got to sort of play with it a, a little bit. Um, what I was saying about doing a lot of the uh, magnesium, selenium, and also CoQ10 on so a higher dose can actually help out as well as the omega oils as well. Um, so what you want to do is you definitely want to uh, try some things like that a little bit and also definitely change up his diet. You know, um, you want to make sure 
definitely you know, no sugary uh, um, things because again, those ebbs and flows inside of his uh, metabolic system will also create some sort of depression, especially um, um, if he has it combined with anxiety as well. So definitely thank you for uh, um, throwing it out there. And uh, I see a lot of that as well. It's the main reason why, you know, actually, I'll give you another case study really quick. I had a, I have a patient, uh, she's 12 years old with sickle cell disease and um, the mom, excuse me, was look um was actually tell me about her diet and I always had most of my um, new patients um keep a, a pain journal and also a food journal as well, so we went over her her diet and her mom was you know like oh no her, her diet is great you know I feed her this this and this and over the course of the week we actually were looking at um what she was really eating and come to find out mom may have put something on her, her plate for breakfast or or at dinner but it was a time in between when she was at lunch at school. And the girl told me basically, I don't eat lunch. The mom was like, what are, what are you eating then? I said, she's eating candy all day long. And the, the girl basically burst out in tears because I was right, she was eating candy all day long. And that, you know, again, that, that, that malnutrition can actually create a lot of depression because of the fact that in a chronic pain patient, it's also on pain medication. When they're taking their, their pain meds, a lot of them have to take it at school if they can pain medication, it has nothing to actually break itself down. So basically it's sitting inside their stomach and it's creating all these emotions and things like that because again, they have that high feeling or, or, or that numb feeling. And that numb feeling is really scary for a lot of individuals too because they, they're walking around sort of paranoid and things of that sort. So you gotta be very, very careful. And that's why I say I'm a real big on diet when it comes to anyone, anyone with pain, uh, in a pain, uh, chronic pain realm, excuse me. Um, so again, it was just a few, a few tips that, that I've seen with a lot of my patients. And I know this is a subject that's very, very touchy with a lot of individuals. I know a lot of individuals are actually watching this and no one wants to really comment. Um, but I know I'm quite sure a lot of you guys are going to have questions about this. So please, you know, if you have questions, always feel free to pass along information and also always feel free to comment below, or you can actually probably message me about this because I know, um, there's a lot of people who ask or they comment on other Facebook posts, but no one wants to get involved. But we see this in, in, in the children, also in the adults. So we gotta make sure that we have a good support system. I mean, even if it's a Facebook, you know, group that is being created and people go in there, you know, anonymously or whatever, just talk their feelings out. You, you, we got to create a safe haven for, for you guys. And that's why, you know, I actually broached um, the, the, this whole subject. Um, I, I wrote about it briefly, but I wrote more so about anxiety. I want to make sure that you guys have enough information to be able to do your things. And so it's nice and try healthy eating. But he is down in a, a, well, again, he's 19. Um, but at the end of the day, um, you also got to realize that, you know, as you say, he's 19. He's going to do whatever he's going to do. You may provide the food for him, but as you know, he, he may or may not eat it. But um, a lot of my patients eventually start to come around because they see how their body's functioning. It's not functioning on a higher level. So they have to take control of themselves. And at a certain point, they have to, you know, um, it's until one of my 15-year-olds and subsequently uh, eight years later, you know, he's graduated college and everything else. I basically told him um, this 15-year-old, um, like I said, eight years ago, actually maybe longer than that, excuse me. Um, I said, either you're going to make yourself healthy or you're going to make yourself die. You know, I, I, I was real blunt with them. I'm real blunt with all my patients. Anyone that has ever seen me, I'm on a patient wise. I'm very, very blunt with my patients. I don't like to pull punches or hold your hand. I'll, I'll hold your hand, but um, I like to tell you the truth about the, the matter. Either anything you put in your body, I don't care who it is who's watching this or who will see it later on, anything you put in your body is either going to, you know, increase your health or take away from your health. Is is no two ways about it. So if you're eating things that, you know, are high in sugar and, and, and bad fats and things that are sort of high in protein, uh, all this other stuff, there's no way for your body to get good nutrients. So if you're not putting good nutrients in your, inside of your body, you're going to end up having some sort of chronic disease. I don't care who you are. I don't care what it is you, that, that you try to do, you know, in between or whatever. That's just the, the, the bare minimum. And that's one reason why, you know, people get tired of me. I'm talking about diet, diet, diet. But, you know, when I can tell you, show you the research that shows that depression a lot of times, especially in chronic pain patients, it's because of the fact that they're nutrient deficient and their, their neurotransmitters are not functioning properly because they don't have the proper enzymes to make them work. You know, this is where I, I, I don't just pull this stuff, you know, just out, out of my head. I actually give the research out to you guys so you can go look if you want to look. Well, I can even provide it if you can provide it as well. 
But these are the main reasons why individuals in chronic pain, you know, have these issues. So you got to make sure you, 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 you steady forcing, you know, these different um, things in his head or in her head to make sure that long term this person would be around, not just short term. And subsequently, um, that individual with sickle cell, um, like I said, he graduated college and he's actually came back home because he, I mean, here in Florida, he came back home. He's actually um, working on his second degree. You know, so it's a matter of being having that tough love, yet in the same token, you got to make sure that you're doing what's right for them, not just short term and, 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 and making them feel good. You, you want to make sure you are able to have grandkids and great grandkids and make sure that, you know, he's able to be a productive citizen as well. So sorry to go on a rambling or, or a tiring a, a little bit, but I just want to make sure that you guys are getting the proper information and why I do what I do. All right, guys, like I said, if you want to guys want to either ask me questions below or a private message me, you can go ahead and do that as well. Um, thank you very much for listening. If you feel as if I've, I've added any sort of value to your life, especially on this subject, I would love to continue to talk to you about it. Take care and have a great evening. And thank you for sharing as well.